just cute little devils. Hey, they got one here that he's gonna, he's not gonna yell. Okay, I just thought I'd share those with you today. These are just little babies. They're probably, oh, maybe a week old now. And we'll raise those and turn them loose here in just a few months. So i tell you what, let's do. Let's have them run all the colors across the screen that you need to paint along with me. And while they're doing that, I'll set these little rascals down and get my palette, and we'll do a fantastic little painting together. I've already covered the canvas with a nice thin even coat of the liquid white, so it's all wet and slick and it's ready to go. So let's just have some fun. Well, today maybe we'd just do a happy little winter scene. Such a super, super day. Let's just do a painting that's got a lot of color in it, it's bright and shiny, and make you feel good inside. Go we'll start out with the least little touch of the Indian yellow. It's very transparent. Just tap a little bit into the bristles. And we have to make a decision right off today. You have to decide basically where your horizon line is going to be. Maybe our horizon will be right along in here, somewhere, out in that area. So we just, we'll just drop a little bit of yellow in there, that easy. Okay, now without washing the brush, I want to add a least little touch of the cad yellow, the cadmium yellow. We'll go right above this, and it's an opaque color. So it'll stand out very nicely there. See, there's a difference. Once again, without cleaning the brush, a touch of the yellow ochre. It's sort of a golden color. And we'll add it right in here. As I say, I want a beautiful little winter scene that has some color in it. Sometimes winter scenes can be so cold, they're almost, oh, they bother you. They're not fun to look at. Now then, let's go, let's go into a little touch of the bright red. What the heck, I, I think that would look good right up here. We still haven't cleaned the brush. So we'll just take the bright red and allow it to mix right in. Well, that's a pretty sky already. Now we're just blending them together so you can't tell where one color stops and the next color starts. Just like so. Now we'll wash the brush. We can just sort of clean it off down here, get rid of some of that color. We'll wash our brush, as always, with odorless thinner. Shake it off. <laughs> cover two or three camera people who are in business. We have the weirdest camera people in, in the industry because they all have these funny colored freckles all over their face. I'm gonna go right into a little touch of the phthalo blue and I'll reach right up here and get a little bit of the midnight black. Blue and black or black and blue, whatever your preference. And then we'll go right up to the top and let's just dance in a happy little sky here. Just making little crisscross strokes like so. And then it come right on down right on down to the red there and where these two come together it'll turn sort of a lavender color but it also this red acts as a barrier between the yellow and the blue so you don't end up with green there we are okay now then we'll wash the old brush again just get it good and clean shake it off give it a good whack and then we can just blend this guy together, like so. Now if you do this at home, I'd recommend you get your brush beater rack, because if you beat your brush against a solid object like I do here, huh, you're gonna, you're gonna redecorate your living room and your popularity is gonna go down about 10 points. I mean, just that quick. Now then, let's take the knife. Let's go down here, get a little touch of the yellows, a little bit of the yellow ochre, like so. A little of cad yellow mix, pull it out flat, get a small roll of paint out here on the knife. Maybe down in here there's just the indication of some little clouds that are floating in here. All you have to do is just touch. It'll take what it wants. Just touch it. Then, with a nice dry two-inch brush, very gently, just blend these out. Now if you really want to throw some light in there, you can take a tiny bit of titanium white and put it here and let it sort of blend upward. It'll really make that sparkle. It doesn't show much now, but when we put different colors down in here, that sun we're gonna jump out at you. Shoot, I tell you what, well, we got this old big brush going. Let me show you, let me show you. Let's have some fun. We'll go right into that titanium white. What the heck? What the heck? Okay, let's go up here. Maybe up here in this sky lives a beautiful cloud. Just up here, floats around, has fun. Hmm. Just using the corner of the brush, making little circular patterns, just little tiny circles round and around. We just let it go right over in here somewhere. We don't care. Wherever you want it to live, there. 
Now then, let me grab a clean brush. I have several of them going. We'll just blend the base of this out, like so. We're carefully not touching the top yet. See, the top of these individual shapes we want to save. And then we're going to fluff them. Just fluff them up. There, look at that. And then very lightly, just blend the entire sky. That easy. Okay, maybe, maybe we'll get crazy today. Shoot, I'll just use a one inch brush, it doesn't matter. Let's take some dark sienna, put a little lead on there, and a little bit of black with it. Dark sienna and black. Mostly dark sienna though. And let's go right along in here, and maybe there's some dark clouds. Same thing, little circular patterns. Just think about basic cloud shapes. Don't just throw this in, but think about individual shapes as you're doing it. There we go, maybe it comes right down in here, wherever you want them. A little more color on the brush, and, 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 right there. And you can put clouds anywhere that you want them in your world. Anywhere. Painting is very individual. Anything that makes you happy, then it's right. Then it's right. There we go. Now, once again, with a large brush, I'm just going to sort of mix this up. The biggest thing this does is removes the excess paint. And then we'll come back and we'll highlight these little clouds, make them really stand out. This just takes off the excess paint. So you don't become a mud mixer and then you'd be, then you'd be mad at me. All right, let's grab an old fan brush. I'm gonna go into the titanium white. Titanium white, I'll be right back, right back. I'm gonna get a little touch of alizarin crimson. Just mix them on the brush. Shoot, that's fine. Nice pinkish color. Now then, let's go right in here and just highlight just some of these clouds here and there. Just where you think light would strike. There. You just make all kinds of beautiful little things. That easy. That easy. Just using the corner of the brush though, that's all we're using. And just once again, those tight little circles and you can make the most beautiful, fluffy little clouds you've ever seen. There. Maybe. There he is. There he is. I knew he was there. So did you. We just had to find him. Pull him out. There. A little up here. And wherever you want him. Don't want too much color. If you put too much and it's too bright, then you'll lose that beautiful darkness that you work so hard to get in these underneath clouds. Now with a large brush, we'll just blend this again. All we're doing is softening the bottom part though. We want to save those nice top edges. Just softening the bottom so it blends together. I beat the brush only to remove the excess paint off of it. It's easier than going through the whole cleaning procedure. Then we can fluff this up, pull it, shape it, tease it. There we go, and very lightly. Just blend it all together. I'm gonna take my large brush and add a little more of the pinkish color right in there. I want a little of that pink right in there. Ooh, that's pretty. And if you'll experiment with these guys, it's unbelievable what you can make. And of course, none of us are interested in that happy buck. But if you should be out selling your paintings, these kind of paintings sell like hotcakes because of all of these beautiful colors in there. You'll find if you're selling paintings, that people buy paintings as much for color as for content. A lot of time people are, are looking for, for a painting to match a room or to create a mood. I'm using just dark sand and a little bit of black here. Be right back, put a little white into it. There we go. Just a nice dark brown color. Tap a little into the bristles. Then we have to make another big decision. Maybe back here lives a little foothill. And all we're doing is just tapping. Just sort of decide where he lives and just tap, like so. See how easy that is? Maybe it comes on back up in here. There. Just a beautiful little foothill back in there. Now we can grab that and very gently, short, tiny little strokes lift upward. And it'll look like little trees that live far, far away, far away. Now, tell you what, let's create some mist at the base of this. So take clean two inch brush and tap firmly. You could probably hear how loud that is. 
really tapping with just the base. See there? Just the base of it. And that'll create that illusion of mist. Now maybe back in here we want a little snow. If we're going to have a winter scene, we need some snow. It's hard to have a winter scene without some snow. Unless you live in Florida. Okay. Decide where your snow is going to live. We can take a large brush and just pull. And it doesn't show up too much yet against that white canvas. But it will as we work on down here. See, sometimes you can get a little crazy. Let's play a little game here. Take that same color. Maybe, maybe there's another little layer of trees that are far off right in there. See there? Give it a little upward lift. Shoot, that easy. We got another layer of trees. Grab the bottom of it and pull it. Allow some of that color to mix right in the white. And it helps create that illusion of mist. Okay. In here, these are just some of the colors that were in the sky I'm going to add right in here. Just wipe them on any old way. Some of them will show through and it'll look like it'll look like reflections coming from this beautiful sky under here. And it just happens. You don't have to worry about it. It'll be there for you. i right, tell you what. Shoot, let's have some fun. We'll just keep using this old two-inch brush. Now you can do this with a round brush. It'd work just as well. I got this one dirty, so we'll just use it. Take just the corner of it. Maybe back in here, we have some beautiful little tree shapes. All we're looking for is just some basic shapes. These are just little trees that are far away back here. Just tap them in. See how easy that is? Okay. Now then. Let's put, let's put a few little few little trunks and limbs and stuff in there. I'm using just Van Dyke Brown liner brush, a lot of paint thinner on it. Turn the brush. This is thin like ink. And maybe we can just see some tree trunks here and there. There they go. Just a little trunk. We don't know how many trees are back here. However many you want. There. See there? And that easy you have the indication of all kinds of little things happening. Just wherever. Now sometimes it's fun. Let me show you something. No, I'll show you something. I'm going to take some liquid white, put it out on the palette. Maybe we can come right down here. Then I'm going to mix some yellow ochre with it. So you have a very thin paint now. Very, very thin. Okay, let me clean the knife off. Now we'll take the liner brush, dip it into paint thinner. I'm going to go into the Van Dyke Brown. Load a lot of color. But it's very thin. Okay, now then. Come back direct down here. Now with the liner brush full, see if we can get a close up right here, I'll show you. The liner brush is full of brown. Now you go right through this very thin color. Now see, it's got white on one side and brown on the other. Now then, let's go up here. Maybe up in here there's some big trees. They're right in here. And you can do the highlight and the shadow in one stroke. <laughs> Sneaky, huh? Okay, reload it. Van Dyke Brown. And we'll go right through the liquid white with a yellow ochre in it. And you can make some of the most beautiful tree trunks. Brown. And wherever you want them. And as many as you want. Maybe there's some little things that just, there they are. Okay. And a little more of the paint thinner. Right through. Put some happy little limbs on this tree. That's sneaky, isn't it? You can make both sides of the tree in a single stroke. There we go. And it makes some beautiful trees. And a stick and a twig and all those happy little things. And sometimes it's nice to put just the indication here and there of a few things that are hanging on. So I'll just take a little of the dark sienna, a little yellow ochre. I'm just going to tap the top corner of the brush into it. Very, very little paint. And here and there, just some little indications that maybe there's something, a few little leaves still hanging on here. Not many, just a few. 
Don't want to overdo. It's very easy to overdo. There. Okay. Now yeah, then. Shoot, let's have some fun. Let's have some fun. We'll take some black and some brown, some phthalo blue, mix them together. Might as well mix up a lot of paint here. A lot of old paint. Okay, tell you what, let me wipe the knife off. Let's use a fan brush today. Let me find a, there's a good fan brush. We'll go right into that dark color. Let's get a lot of paint on the brush. A lot of paint. Now then, have to make some big decision. Maybe in our world there lives a nice little evergreen right there. Right there. Use just the corner of the brush, work back and forth. Back and forth. As you work down the tree, apply more and more pressure so it gets wider, thicker, stronger toward the bottom. There. Look at that. Look at that. Boy, that really stands out against that light background over there. Maybe. Yeah, right there. We'll give him a little friend. Everybody needs a friend. You know, if painting has done nothing else, it has brought me so many new friends. It's unreal. I've met literally thousands of fantastic people all because of painting. There we are. And maybe over here. Let's, let's have a big tree. What's a strong son of a gun? It goes up here. This is where the this is where the hawk sits, the big eagle maybe. Depending on where we're at. There. Or maybe the owl I showed in the last program. Maybe that's where he lives. There. He sits up here and surveys the whole countryside. Watches for a little mouse to go scampering across the snow. And he comes down on wings that are soft as velvet. You never hear him. And zip. Okay, now then, watch here. Let me take a little white on the large brush. I want to create the illusion of another plane right here. So take titanium white, grab a touch of that blue, just a touch, and pull it. Just pull it, and then begin blending it. That's simply. See there, you can create a whole nother plane. You want one separate for this tree? Grab it, pull again. You can create as many different areas as you want in your world. That easy. See, these colors that we put on, those nice pinks and oranges, they're beginning to show through, and they're beautiful. There we are. So it all looks like deep, dark background area now. Okay. Tell you what, we'll just take the knife, scrape right through here, just make the indication of a little trunk. All we're doing is scraping right through the paint, allowing a little bit of the canvas to show through. You can paint a trunk in if you want to. All I'm doing is just scraping it out. All right, grab another fan brush. Take a little of the liquid white, a little titanium white, a little phthalo blue, mix them together. There, beautiful blue. That phthalo blue is so pretty. A lot of paint on the brush. Now let's go right up in here. Let's just put some highlights on these trees. Mm. Oh, that is beautiful. So beautiful the way it stands out. Brings that tree alive. Makes it jump out at you. And what makes this so attractive, this is a cool color. Blue is a very cool color, and it's against these warm colors back here. It's very nice to play cool against warm and vice versa. There. Okay. Shoot. If I had a spot like that, I'd have to build me a little house out here. I'd have to live right out here. There's a lot of ways you can make a little house. Let's, let's do a little, little thing right here. The easiest way is take your knife, and scrape out a basic shape. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll do a fancy little dooter out here. Okay, we can scrape this out without being committed. Maybe it comes out, maybe it goes on over here. What the heck? Maybe the carpenter just got crazy and has a long roof over here. There's the side. Here's the front, or however. Maybe that's the front, it's up to you. Now then, take Van Dyke Brown. A little dark sienna in it. Just mix them together. Pull the paint out very flat. Get a small roll of paint right out on the edge of the blade. Okay. Now then, let's go right in here. Zoom. Gotta make those little noises. All we're doing here is just blocking in color. There we go. Just block it in. 
like so. Now then, let's take some red and some little yellow ochre and grab some white. And we want this to really stay marbled. Get our little roll of paint. Okay, now then, let's just go right along here, just barely touch. Just let it bounce across. We'll make all kinds of beautiful little things happen here. Just all kinds of things, right out here in this edge. A little brighter, there, look at that. Mm. Now, on the other side, on the other side, this will be a little darker. Not as much light's gonna hit here. But the same basic thing, just let it tap. Want this to look old and, there we go. There we go. Maybe, tell you what, let's put some snow up here on the roof. And we're just gonna let this snow bounce along like it's old snow up here. So it's thick. It's thick, now just gently pull right across that and it'll look like you can look through it. Make some very nice effects. Very thick though. Sometimes we paint very thin, other times very, very thick. Maybe this old cabin, yeah, let's have a little shed right here. What the heck? A little bit of brown, just like we did the other one. Some of our nice highlight colors, tap those in. Darker over here. Okay. A little white up here, just like so. Okay, now we can come in here and we just do our old cabinectomy. And this is where you get your perspective right, bring everything together, get all that color off the canvas, go into our old big brush. Now then, just come right up in here. Now we can lay all kinds of happy little snow things in there, just like that. Begin thinking about the lay of the land. There we are. I'm going to a little, add a little phthalo blue to that. There. And maybe we want to change the angle. Watch here, watch here. Maybe this comes down like that. Just by doing that, we can change this angle. Now then, take our fan brush. We'll take a little dark sand, a little Van Dyke brown mixed together. And let's just pop in some little bushes and some little weeds right along in here, like so. Push the brush upward so it bends. Maybe over in here, there's a few in here. Wherever you want them. There we go. And back to our fan brush, it has white on it. Grab a little of that, pull it. Then just blend it together. Just blend it together. Tell you what, maybe in our cabin over here, let's have a couple little windows. Just bloop, bloop, that easy. We got a happy little window. Let's get crazy. You know me, I like them old big trees. So let's take some of the browns, that's Van Dyke, Dark Sienna. Let's go right up here. Maybe there lives in our world a big old tree. Right about there. And we'll give him a little friend. Take a little bit of light color, go right down the side. So one side's got some highlight, grab it, give it a little pull. Like so. Take our liner brush, a little thin paint on it, and we'll drop in some little sticks, twigs, little arms on this tree. Just like that. All kinds of little things. And with that, we about have a finished painting. While I'm finishing this up, I'd like to to wish you a happy painting. I hope you've enjoyed this one. It will certainly, certainly help you. And if you paint this one, you'll learn how to use the equipment to play with color. It'll make your day better. Put a little stick in a twig here. I think we'll call this painting finished. So from all of us here, happy painting and God bless.